Okay, so hi, welcome to the Welcome to Night Vale panel. So this is my first time running a panel, and so I have just a little skit for you guys. Well, I mean like a broadcast. And um, then we're gonna do some trivia, and I have, hang on. Hmm? And I have these little glow clouds for you guys that I that I hand, <laughs> that I handmade. I, there are about twenty of them. And if you get a trivia question right, um, I'll give you one. And unfortunately, I can't attest to your mental freedom if you accept one of these miniature glow clouds. So get them at accept them at your own risk. And then after the trivia, there's also going to be like a Q and A session. No, that's before the trivia. Sorry. After the trivia, there will be just general discussion for the rest of the time because my script is only like four pages long. So, I don't know how long it's actually gonna take. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I work with you. Okay, so without further ado. I actually have music, it's pretty cool. We are not real. The universe is an illusion, and we are all figments of the imagination of a malevolent god. Welcome to Night Vale. special live broadcast of our show, dear listeners. It is special because I have two very unique guests here in the studio with me. On my left is intern Dana, who recently escaped from the dog park. And on my right is my beautiful, sweet scientist, Carlos. And you, dear listeners, there will be times in this broadcast which when you can call in and ask us questions, and we will do our best to answer. But before that, a bit of news. Not all of you have been eating at Big Rico's Pizza, dear listeners, and the Sheriff's Secret Police would like me to remind you that it is a misdemeanor not to do so. I know their menu has dwindled greatly since the ban on wheat and wheat byproducts, but their new invisible menu is amazing. Why, I just went there yesterday with lovely Carlos, and we had a great time. I had a slice of Rico's invisible pepperoni pizza, and it was great. Carlos, why don't you tell them, everyone what you thought of it? Well, I don't particularly care for their invisible menu, but I had a bowl of stewed tomatoes and melted cheese wads. It was all right, I guess, but very mushy. Though, I did like the seasoning. Okay. Thank you, Carlos, for that ringing endorsement. In other news, Dana, tell us. How did you escape the dog park? Carlos, you saw her emerge from the dog park, right? Wait, you saw her emerge from the house that does not exist, right? That's correct, Cecil. She walked out of the house, talking on a cell phone, and walked right through me. I think she was in a different dimension. Or shifted just enough so that we could see her. But she couldn't see her interact with us. That's right, Carlos. I walked out of the house and I thought I was talking to Cecil and myself, but the connection continued to get fuzzier and fuzzier. Then my phone started pulsing. Not vibrating, but beating in time with my own heart. So I walked towards the red light at the tip of the very large hill. Then, well, it gets hard to describe in English, but I think I picked up enough of the native language to say that it was, um, Glarn, Tudan on Lincoln, et Gwong, to Gradman of Funk. And say con cola wallacy, and some larn, and click it out, yeah, so need it. And say on a vet. And now I'm here. Um, does that make sense, Cecil? Yes, that's quite fascinating, Dana. Well, I am glad you're back. To the family of Dana the intern, you should be proud. Proud that in times of trouble and chaos, your daughter has made it safely home against all the odds. Proud that she has endured all the trials life threw at her. Proud that she has not mutated into a grotesque, semi-corporeal being. In other news, it seems that beef jerky, and beef in general, has spontaneously imploded. <laughs> and we're not quite sure why. If you have experienced this beef implosion, please do not say anything. Anyone who has come into recent contact with beef and beef jerky will be rounded up by the sheriff's secret police and detained indefinitely. And now, 
a word from our sponsors, presented by our lovely intern, Dana. Mall of America wants to remind you that there's a place for shopping for your life. Mall of America. Shop. Shop or die. Shop until you die. Wandering the endless halls of shops, never knowing whether you have made a full circuit of the labyrinthine innards so like a dog park, except for people. There's a place for shopping for your life. Mall of America. Mall of America. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> I have just received a report that the hooded figures seem agitated. I don't know where I received this from, as it just kind of appeared on my desk. No one can see past the ten-foot wall surrounding the dog park, so no one can see the hooded figures and... Oh, it seems that the hooded figures are emerging from the dog park and heading into town. Citizens, I urge you to stay indoors. Do not approach the hooded figures and do not look at them. Keep your blinds shut and your doors and windows locked tight. I will stay here in the station and update you on the situation when, if I receive another report. And now traffic. It's pretty smooth all around, but there's a bit of congestion if you head north on I-95. Keep clear of Old Southtown Road as well, as we have a bit of construction there and it's really backing up traffic. I was just taking a detour on Mulberry Street, although there's a parade going down it so soon from about 10 to 2. I was just going on Frontier Road instead. It'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run, trust me. Everywhere else looks good, so I would suggest going outside for a drive in this lovely weather we're having. Um, uh, thank you, Carlos. Listeners, it appears that the hooded figures have come into the station. Yes, I can see them just outside the booth. Dear listeners, I- Oh, oh, Cecil, don't worry, I know them. I met them in the dog park, and they're really actually very nice once you get to know them. You see, I called that one over there Kitty, because they make a noise like a cat, kind of. Then um, this one is Comtessa in an out burger. And then this one over here is Ignacio Contreras de Zavarda. That took about four days to communicate in Hooded Figure Charades. Those are four days I will never get back. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ignacio Contreras de Zavarda. Really. Thank you. Um, are you sure they're not harmful, Dana? I'm quite sure. Don't worry, Cecil. They're quite nice as long as you're not a dog or covered in tattoos or some kind of eldritch horror terror or a man with a tan leather jacket and a deerskin briefcase, or talking about the Night Vale Stadium, or a librarian, or if you don't like eating at Big Rico's Pizza, or if you do like Jerry's Tacos. All right, you... um, thank you, Dana. Anyway. <clears throat> the Night Vale Community Health Board would like to ask you, are you happy with your nose? <laughs> do you think it's attractive? Is it a normal skin color? If not, they are offering free nose replacements. All they ask is that you shower and rub your nose with fresh mint before going to their clinic, which is located on 33rd and Arlington. Remember to bring a sprig of rosemary to pacify the guard dog outside, as well as a dog treat, if you're feeling generous. And now Carlos, with the Children's Fun Fact Science Corner. I have this large book of science facts, which I will read some for the Fun Fact Science Corner. Can you hold up? This is the page I shall be reading from. <laughs> what do different types of clouds indicate? Clouds are named according to their shape, height, and size. They're usually associated with rain, snow, sleet, or hail. But not all clouds mean that bad weather is on their way. Dark, angry-looking clouds usually bring wet and windy weather, but a sky full of fluffy white clouds on a warm, sunny day usually means that the weather will stay that way. Thank you, Carlos. That was a very good segue. For now, the weather. Feel free to sing along if you know the lyrics.
This is the part where you can call in and ask us questions. Please do not ask anything explicit, as there may be children, angels, or fragile-minded citizens Take Carlsberg. listening to our broadcast. You may attempt to ask the hooded figures questions, but I don't know how responsive they will be. Yes, you on the end. How's Kashak? Kashak is doing quite well. He and his kittens are still floating stationary in the men's bathroom. Got here, John. I don't know what do you call that. <laughs> <laughs> he said Steve Carlsberg for those who couldn't hear him. Oh, I see. <laughs> you in the back. Um, as a citizen who moved to Nightville, why do we dislike uh, Desert Bluff so much? Because they suck. <laughs> Desert Bluff sucks so much. So hard. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello? Desert Bluffs does not suck, you double. <laughs> yes, it does. It does not. Stay away from me, you creepy ass smile. Strike car. It is everything. I'm. I'm not gonna. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How's the Desert Bluffs football team doing this year? Uh, our football team is kicking their asses. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to. Um, I forgot his name. Never mind. But yeah, they are doing poorly <laughs> against. Yeah, they are doing poorly against our team. Michael Sandero. Michael Sandero. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> are there any other questions? Yes. Other Carlos. Hey Carlos, don't you think we need a haircut? No, you don't need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we totally do need a haircut. No, you don't. Yes. No. Yes. No. Don't you like my haircut? No, I like it long. Beautiful. I like it long. Beautiful. Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> Perfect, Carlos. Yes, Nefeta. Have you ever made a poll for Carlos? I have not, although that is a very good idea. Roses are red, violets are blue, Carlos is perfect. <laughs> I like that one. There's an angel who has a poem. There's an angel who has a poem? Yes, there's an angel who has a poem. Oh. Okay, there's apparently an angel at this panel. Press the down button and read it out loud. Okay. Carlos, your hair. It shines in the sun, it sways in the breeze, and when the day's done, it glows by the campfire between you and me. I really do worship your hair, so to speak. But when I sit next to you, nose to your shoulder, I realize the beauty has escaped this beholder. For whether it's combed, curled, whatever you do, my favorite part is underneath it all. You. Okay. That was really cute. Thank you, Angel. Yes. Has Carlos let you do science yet? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, we have done science. <laughs> yes, Jade. Hey, Carlos, have you ever heard of aperture science? Yes, I have. Actually, I have. They're pretty interesting and they're really great, though I kind of don't agree with them about 95% of the time. <laughs> I don't know what aperture science is, but it sounds cool. They do what they must because they can. <laughs> For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. I guess I like sometimes too. I like cake. If you except, want. except there's a ban on wheat and wheat byproducts, so we can't have cake. Flourless cake is delicious, though. Yeah, you in the back with the flower thing. Um, Cecil, has Carlos ever tried to make his valentine? It did not go well. We don't speak of that. It never happened. Yeah, you. Has there, has there been any new word on the glow cloud? The glow cloud is still the head of the school board. <laughs> All hail the glow cloud. Oh. All hail the glow cloud. Oh. He's doing. He's doing. It's doing a wonderful job at leading our schools, and our children are getting much smarter now. Is our children learning? Yes, our children is learning. <laughs> Any more questions? <coughs> Come on, guys, we have like 40 oh minutes gosh. left. Yeah, you, other Cecil again. Yeah. How many interns have died while you have worked in radio? I've honestly lost count, but we thank all of their families for their contributions. <laughs> I know that they served 
the radio audience very well. In the back there? Yeah, in the back there. Donna, what was your favorite thing to do in the dog park? Did you say Donna? <laughs> Well, I'm Dana, Dana. I, and I was in the dog park, so I'm going to answer this question. Donna, Donna can sit down, and Donna can actually walk home. Um, and you know, in the dog park, I did mention hooded figure charades. Uh, that's tedious. Um, we writhed around on the ground from hunger a lot. That took up a lot of time. Um, you know, there's, there's. Thank you for all of the citizens who did manage to throw canned food over the dog park wall. It, it did. It made it made the writhing take up a lot less of our days. Um, we couldn't really tell whether it was day or night or, you know, in between times. Um, so, you know, sleeping was irregular, kind of between the writhings. Um, we tried to play tic-tac-toe, but for some reason the Hoodist figures really dislike that game. I can't explain it, but tic-tac-toe is a no-go, apparently. Right? I mean, I don't <laughs> See, they wanted them to get the pen to start it. So, you know, a lot of things, um, mostly involving somehow surviving without much food or, or daylight. But you made it up, and that's what matters. I did. You are an amazing intern, Dana. Any more questions? Yes, Kevin. Uh, to the hooded figures, what is it exactly that you have against dogs? <laughs> All right. I am disinclined to translate that. You can understand them? Some of the time. I, I'm pretty good at picking up languages when I have to, but that one, that was rude. <laughs> okay, no translating of the, okay, yes, Cass. Uh, how is your progress on ridding the world of librarians carrying on? It's go, carrying on. Um, they kind of just pop up in a lot. I think they spawn from books. So, the library is never really free of librarians, but if you do run into one, remember, do not climb a tree. There are no trees in the library, and you will just waste your time looking for one. Your best option is to run. Or to use magic glasses. Or to use magic glasses. Yes? Can books be trees? Before they're made into books, yes. But there is a process. We can pulp them again and make them back into trees. I've heard, I've heard the Whispering Forest is particularly into that. Yes, Nefeta. We even Carlos do something shippy. Well, what is shippy? Is that like a, a cargo carrier? <laughs> <laughs> the the night water, water like, waterfront is not currently me, filled with any water. Hug and be a tumble. Hug and be a tumble. Oh, be oh, cute. That. Ship, 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 ship. Oh. Was that good? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, you in the back. Stand up, I can't see you. Stand up, yeah. First, Cecil, do you think Dana has the ability to take over Nightville Radio once a day? Well, I don't plan on leaving anytime soon, but I think if I ever decide to retire, or something unfortunate happens to me, that she is very capable and can take over. She has, she has learned a lot. don't remember ever interning at the station, and anything you've heard in previous broadcasts, I have no recollection of. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Cecil, what's the process of selecting a You pretty much just fill out a form, and if you're of able body and mind, you can probably become an intern. We go through them really fast. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's always unfortunate. You do have to consult the tablets at City Hall, though. Yes, you have to consult the tablets. If they say something different, you can't become an intern. Yeah. Speaking of interns, what's the shortest time anybody's ever been an intern for you? Uh, approximately five seconds. They walked in the door and were carried off by a giant pterodactyl. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no idea where it came, because I've never seen it came from. Wait, what I'm about the black hole? I thought that one lasted 2.5 seconds. Oh yeah, the black hole one. They, they, walked, they didn't even get into the station, they just... They were on the threshold of it, and then a black hole opened up and swallowed them. That was very unfortunate. Unfortunately, though, it wasn't Steve Carlsberg. <laughs> Cass again. If you had a chance, would you make Steve Carlsberg an intern? If it would shorten his lifespan, then yes. <laughs> I would not work with Steve Carlsberg. 
No, I actually wouldn't. Okay, yeah. If he did a show? He would suck. <laughs> he wouldn't be good as me, obviously. Steve Carlsberg knows nothing about the, you know, no, delicacy of radio. He knows nothing about radio at all. Yeah, Jade, Jade again. And um, then you. What, what do you have against Steve Carlsberg? He is the worst human being to ever walk the earth. He sucks. He cut me off once when I was trying to merge. <laughs> and he never, he's never apologized for it. And his left shoe is never tied. No, his left shoe is never tied. And that is, okay. Yeah, you with the stripes that you. Yeah, girl, so do you. Um, I just blow dry it after I get out of the shower and then just put some hair gel and call it good. That's about it. It's pretty simple. Or just some days I wake up and don't even dare bother with it. It's just hair. His hair is always perfect. It's just hair, though. How is it perfect? Do you it's, have it's a perfect hair. hair gel for your perfect no, hair? No, it's just regular hair bought at Mall of America. Oh, a place for shopping for your life. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, you in the back again. Stand up again. Well, I mean, actually the best part about being in the dog park was that it was a dog-free zone. Um, so that was actually very nice. Dogs, I like it when I get to leave the dogs behind at the end of the day, and they stay where they're at, not near me. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, right there in the middle. I don't remember my mother. or anything about my childhood, really. It's all just kind of black. I was, yeah, you with the ears. There was a person once a couple days ago, and they were just walking down the street in a t-shirt and blue jeans, I think. It was really weird. I think that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Wait, wait, just a t-shirt and blue jeans? Yeah, just a t-shirt and blue jeans. Did they, did they have no. moccasins on? No, it was just normal shoes. Wait, what about, what about a uh, coonskin hat? No. See, weird, right? What kind of barbarian was it? I know. <laughs> okay, we have another question. Oh, from Cecil. Cecil, if you had to describe your relationship with Carlos in three words, what would they be? Perfect, sweet, and beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. If the Apache tracker were to come back to life, but what would you say to him for rescuing Carlos? Oh, um, I think I would thank him and then call him a big jerk. Because he's a racist asshole. <laughs> Seriously, don't wear feather headdresses unless you're actually Indian. I think you'd be Native American. Yeah, Jade and Beck. Alright, Carlos, if you had to describe your relationship with this if I had to describe it in three words, I don't think there is any words I could say on the planet that could describe our relationship in just three words. So I frankly cannot say them. Yes. Yeah, you, Carpet. Oh, okay, okay. Figures. What did you think of that uh, poem written on Poetry Week? You know, the, you know the one. Dana knows the one quite intimately. <laughs> We don't talk about that. They weren't particularly fond of it, but some of the metrical styling was interesting. <laughs> you guys should ask them how to figure some more questions. <laughs> yeah, you with the TARDIS hat. It's still there. We're working on exterminating it, but it's, they're surprisingly resilient. Thankfully, they're so tiny that it is going to take them a long lot time to walk up lane five. Yeah, they're like cockroaches. You can't kill them. <laughs> yeah, you with a hoodie. If the hoodie could describe yours and how Everybody sees this thing. I could. 
Could I hear that again? I, I'm not sure on some of that. Oh, um, I'm going to take a little bit to translate this. Just give me a sec. Okay. Well, she translates that. Yeah. You the dragon. Are they, like, secretly crabby? Like, no, they're not crabby. They just, they just speak. And that's just, that's just headed figure language. You stole Isn't it our perfectly clear? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> what? So like the Pokemon crab speaks hooded figure language? That's amazing. No. <laughs> they just speak in static. And apparently Dana can understand them. It just it just seems like static. Do you need a pen? I have several. I'm just trying to find one they like. Okay. <laughs> oh, well she does that. Um any more questions? What? You'll have to find Yeah, John. Now this is a question for Dana. Yes. Dance. Well, I mean, that was a pretty pretty fair approximation of what dance parties were like in the dog park. I, you know, eventually you get to the point where that seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> Please don't destroy the table. Um, oh, wow, that's going to be, that's going to be interesting to translate. Um, you know, they, they do, you know, that was actually pretty lively for Hooded Figures. That was, a, that was actually a really good dance party, guys. You're learning really well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my translation work on a little more. Yeah, you in the front. Do you prefer NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? <laughs> <laughs> Do they even listen to music? <laughs> <laughs> um, they're actually pretty big fans of 98 Degrees and um, LMNT. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess neither, apparently. <gasps> you in the back. Uh, Cecil, do the radio stations ever have any fun office parties? We don't speak about the office parties. They were discontinued about three years ago after, um, yeah. <laughs> they, they never existed. I've got the translation. Uh, they say the three words are um, bountiful, gratuitous, and myriad. Thank you, Hooded Figures. You're very sweet. <laughs> I'm not repeating that one. <laughs> Any more questions? You still have like half an hour left. <laughs> you in the back. You guys work on radio, so Cecil, what is your favorite music to listen to? What is my favorite music? I don't know, I don't listen to that much music. Most of it is band and I feel. But I am particularly fond of the weather. <laughs> Just all of the weather. Those are the allowed songs. Yeah, you in the TARDIS hat again. Waiting for the bus in the rain. <laughs> there are other answers to that question? Apparently, that's why she asked it. I've liked some of them. Or he, I can't see. Did, okay, you in front. Yeah, have you heard from station management recently? They have been surprisingly quiet, which makes me a little bit un unnerved, but um, I hope they're not doing like debating or something. What do you think? Weren't there various writhings the other day? I, I find the writhings to be a, a comforting sign. Yeah, very comforting, but not at, not if they get to to writhingness. No, no, no. I think if the writhings turn into flailings, that's that's worrisome. But writhings in general are good. Yes, there were some writhings a couple days ago, but they've been mostly silent. You, Kevin, again. What do you think now that Strex Corp has bought the Night Vale radio station? Did they actually buy us, or did they just come? Okay. Well, I think that the Strex Corp is a good thing for Night Vale, and I'm looking forward to working under them. <laughs> it's going to be a great, great time. <laughs> I think there was someone Oh, oh yeah, in the back. Way in the back. Yeah, the angel. Can you, can you speak up, please? For the hooded figures. What have you done with old woman Josie? <laughs> I don't think you want to know. I'm sure she's safe though, wherever she is. The angels are watching over her that we can't know about. Angels don't exist. There is no hierarchy of angels. No. Yeah, you in the back again. So Carlos, is the rest of your hair perfect? Oh! oh. 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 The rest of your hair. Oh, that's, that's none of your... Steve's Carlsberg might be listening. <laughs> it is quite perfect though. <laughs> 
Well, dear listeners, <laughs> thank you for your intriguing questions. May they provoke deep, benevolent thoughts in your minds and give you good things to ponder and stave off the horrors of the world. Horrors, in fact, that might not be so horrible after all. Once you get to know them, I urge you to go out into the world and talk to someone new, meet a stranger, and take the time to know them and make a new friend. Until next time, dear listeners, in the meantime, stay tuned for a special one hour long performance by the Nightville Institution of Mimes. <laughs> okay. Thank you for asking so many questions. That was really good. Okay, so um, for the rest of the time, we're going to do some trivia, and then if that doesn't take up the rest of our time, we have like 24 minutes left. Um, then we'll do general discussion. Do we want to just uh, ask them down the table? Yeah, sure. Let's let the, let's let the guys are going to have to lean in. This is about as far as it goes. Yeah, I don't need no mic. Yeah, you can also just project. And I have the glove here. I was going to turn that for them, but okay. If you were in here at the beginning of the panel, these are what you win if you get the trivia questions right. Uh, and I cannot attest to your mental freedom if you accept such a gift. <laughs> but I can probably promise that you won't harm yourself or others while under the influence of the glow pipe. Yeah, we'll ask the trivia and then you raise your hands and we'll pick someone. You get oh yeah, and the, the hooded figures are actual people now so they can talk. Yay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, speak up. Question one. What is the five-headed dragon's name? I wrote this back before he came. He was in the episode, so it was, was easy. watching closely for the first hand. I believe it was Kevin. I think yeah, it was Kevin. Kevin. Hyper McDaniels. Yes. That is correct. <laughs> oh, and I handmade these, so you better appreciate them. <laughs> what? Cecil, you speak. Okay, I will. These are for the panel, though. I'll probably do a game Who is John Peters? That Jade. Jade yeah. You know, the farmer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here. Are you Oh. <laughs> yes, catch. <laughs> Who cut Carlos's hair? Awesome. Telly the traitorous barber. That is correct. Telly the traitorous barber. What happened to um, Telly? Um, I think by a hair. Yeah, Desi Desi was you on the trigger car, cat. Wait, what? You. Think you got yeah, it by you. hair. Desi. Okay, so he's like in the desert cutting cactus sprinkles. Yeah, that's correct enough. <laughs> he was also clutching scraps of Carlos's hair. <laughs> because he's a bastard and he regretted what he did. Okay, um, in, a, in a story about you, what was in the crate that you took? Her head. Um, a house. It was a replica house with a family going windows. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it was also very insanely detailed. What was on what was under lane five at the desert flower bowling alley in our cave on Green you are in a very miniature city. Yeah, I don't know. You're correct. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that in the panel, so Yeah, you throw it. Oh okay. you asked the question, you so do we do this next one all together? Okay. Um, yes. All hail the glow cloud! All hail the glow cloud! Glow cloud. Oh, you're supposed to raise your hands. Oh well. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that pirate. I think that pirate had the hand up first. I think I have more trivia questions than actual. Okay, so we'll skip that one then. Uh, either hooded figure on the end. It's this one. What is the NRA's new slogan? You in the back. Oh, you. Guns don't kill people. We're all um, immortal souls living. No. Black. That wasn't the, the first one, the original one. Oh. I believe that was correct, though. No. Well, that was one of them, but it wasn't the original. We're looking for the first one, okay. Yeah, the yes. first one. You, you go. Guns don't kill people. You're all invincible. Correct. Yeah. Woo! You can throw it. Stand up. Stand up to catch it. Yeah, okay, good. We good. <laughs> What did the shape in Grove Park do when Cecil started talking about it? You angel in the back. Move closer. No. 
Yeah, Cecil. No, no. You people. Yeah, I started making this weird morning sound. We're looking Maybe. for a color. Yeah, what's the one? No. Green's not a creative color. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cecil again. Yeah, it grew red and it started to vibrate. You got most of it. Stand up. Oh, oh. No. sorry, that one was light. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and please don't answer twice because I have a limited number of glow bugs. What were the drawbridge ba base supports made out of? There are three red answers to this one. Yes. The other two answers were oh. not very. <laughs> <laughs> the other two answers were not dairy creamer and ceramic bowls. <laughs> Why did station management come out of its office? I believe Cecil the answer first. Was that when Cecil was talking about Carlos too much? No. That was just when they just grew agitated. Yeah, you with the flower in the back. When Cecil started talking about it. Yes. Yay. And what else? There was another part. Yeah, letters were sent. Okay, here, stand up. <laughs> Apparently I can't throw with my left hand, sorry. <laughs> that was supposed to be my throw. Oh, sorry. You can throw mine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, where are people who vote incorrectly taken by the secret police? You in the back. The old abandoned mine. That isn't so abandoned. Yes. Yes! Sweet nice gosh. throw. Yep. What is the station cat's name? Oh, this was said in the panel. Oh, yeah. oh god. I think it was the first one there. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course. Obviously. Mm -hmm. This is as far as it goes. Okay. There. What came through the portal in the PTA meeting episode? The you angel. Wait. Did you get yeah, you and the red shirt. Yeah, you. Sorry. That is correct. And that he previously said that they were pteranodons, and that was wrong. So the correct answer is pterodactyls. Uh, next is this one. No. What should you do if there's a red flag on a piece of trash? You and the angel. That is correct. Did you get it? Oh, oh, oh. Pretty close. Nice. <laughs> what did all wheat and wheat byproducts turn into? There are two right answers. Over there. Uh, snakes. And then? <laughs> that was correct though, so you get a go with That It was snakes and then evil spirits. Okay. And then they like disappeared or something. Ooh, I have a good one. Yeah. Where did Cecil go on his trip to Europe? Oh, there are three oh, answers. Yes. Oh, no one answered. Do you already yeah, have one, have, Carcat. Yeah, you already have one, Carcat. Carcat wants to show off. I think <laughs> actually... Carcat listened to this how many times? Yeah, we have more questions than we have more floods. Go ahead and answer if you got it. Does anyone else have? Does anyone else know? I doesn't look like it. Okay, Carcat, go ahead. He's the smartest troll in the room. <laughs> Francia, Switz, and um, the best one. Crap. <laughs> uh, and the first. Light the barge um, That was Francia. That was Francia, Switz, and. Uh, Very so close. Uh, other one, New Flarp, or something like that. Very close. You were close. Switz, Francia, and Luftenarp. Yeah. Yeah. In that order. Would you like the hooded figure translation sheet? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was right to you. You just did not catch that. It's because it's car cat. What do you expect? Like, not much. <laughs> okay, I have. A, I'm skipping these two because they're easy. Um, what is Cecil's full name? He says this in the recent episode. Oh, most recent episode. Uh, you should have all heard the most recent episode. This is not a spoiler for your panel. Do you know it, Kevin? Hang on, wait for other people. Do other people know it? Come on, red girl, do you know? Okay, Kevin, go ahead. Do you know? Cecil Gershwin Palmer. Palmer, yes. Palmer? It was Palmer. Palmer. Wasn't it Palmer? Yeah, it was Palmer. Yeah. It was Palmer? Okay. Which was creepy. Okay, this is a bonus hard question. It was mentioned in one of the, um, in the episodes, but no one is probably going to know this. Where is Telly's Barbershop located? Oh. <laughs> Cass. No. 
Oh, it's an actual yeah. address. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> this was in like one of the first five episodes. I'm in the Summer Street. Not even close. No. <laughs> no, that's the location of the broadcast. Dang it. No, I was listening to episodes looking for trivia, and I thought this was going to be a really hard one, and it is. <laughs> yeah? In Nightmare. <laughs> well, technically yeah. correct. It's not specific enough. So we're gonna we're gonna okay. come up back to those two we skipped, huh? Yeah, those are the easy ones. Okay. The answer to that one was Southwest Fifth Street and Old Musk Road. I knew it. Oh, you should not know that. If you no, actually I'm not knew surprised that, that you scheduled your intervention for sooner. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the question to see if there are any fanatics in the room. No, I do. I do. That was listening to the entire thing eleven times. Okay, okay, but let's go back to the easy ones, shall we? Yeah. Carlos, you have one. Which one? That one. Who is Michael Sandero and what happened to him? Recent episodes. Okay, that's all of our trivia. What's the time? 15. 16. Okay, it's 9.17, so we have like 13 minutes. Who wants to... Okay, so general discussion now. Or you can ask us questions in characters. In character, I guess. Yeah, you in the back. Can you name all the uh, new uh, ranks the Boy Scouts have put in? Probably not. I know there's Eternal Scouts. Dreadnought Scouts. What? Beer Scouts? Beer? Scouts. Um, Scouts. Scouts. Um, Scouts. Carcat, just get yourself up here. <laughs> Carcat, you come answer this. Come here. Come here. I don't know if I know them in order. Beer, Blood Pack, Dreadnought. I don't know them in order. Also, Hooded Figure, you just spilled water everywhere. Oh, I'm so sorry. Carcat. No Hooded Figure. I don't know if I know them in order. I have all the Scout buttons. I know, I want them. So the answer is no, we, we don't. No, I don't know all of them. I know them in Skyrim. Yes, but you can probably order. actually list them, Carcat. No, 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 I'm not. Besides, you need to be on another panel's Carcat. No, 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 if anyone wants to like uh, put forth girl. head cannons or anything, yeah, you in the back again. I do have a legit head cannon. Okay, what's your head cannon? Yeah. Courage the Coward. Guys, shut up, let him talk. Courage the Coward, the dog actually happened in Night Vale. Yes. Oh. That was really cool. I like that. Oh. I, like that. Like, that I never so thought of that. Well. I like that. Yes, she likes it. Yes, she likes it. Kelly the Barber has been naughty. Oh. 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 Kelly the Barber has been naughty. I haven't seen Courage the Cowardly Dog, but apparently, okay. Flower Girl. Flower Girl. Okay, this is a question for the entire cast. Yes. Comfy boots or magic shoes? Ooh. <laughs> magic doesn't exist. I said matching. Oh, matching. <laughs> I, I'm going to stick with magic doesn't exist. <laughs> that's my answer. Yeah, that's my answer. Oh, you don't have to answer your character, I guess. Unless you want to. Carlos, uh, what is your answer? Um, they they say boots. moccasins yeah. are more comfy comfortable. Boots. Moccasins are more comfortable, but um, I second head figure, what was what was that? Well, I was going to say, um, put them together and have matching magic shoes. <laughs> <laughs> magic doesn't okay. exist. No, magic doesn't. Neither do angels. Yes, Cecil. So if you had to cast an actor as your character for a movie, who would you cast? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. Darth Vader for a hooded figure. <laughs> what? Actually, the guy that voiced Darth Vader wasn't the same as James. Actor. No, James Earl Jones, which is why yes. I put that in there. I don't know who I cast as Cecil. James Earl Jones, and then the yeah, guy. you cast Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. For, for Cecil. Yeah. Okay, I'm going with Tom Hiddleston for Cecil. Oh. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, Carlos. Wait, do we not get to answer? Oh, yeah. Do you actually have an answer? I was working on one. Okay, then answer. Um, oh, oh shoot, what's her name? She's on know. Parks and Recreation. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, the other, the other <laughs> My mind reading license expired. Actually, I don't know what you're talking about. No, the one that's not Amy Poehler. No, that's, I don't she's just show. Angelina Tilly. You all suck, I'm, I'm just up. throwing out names. All right, Carlos, wait. Who had the question, Kevin? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Carlos. When you were young, were you taught by a Mr. Rashida Frizzle? Jones? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Lucky guess. Okay, really? Come okay, on. cool. I have a headcanon that Miss Frizzle is the old woman. Oh, I mean the old lady Josie. Yeah, Josie. Yeah, old woman Josie is Miss Frizzle. Wow. In my head, question. Yeah, Carcat. Carlos, when you were a younger scientist, did you ever like you know take Mentos and? 
Diet Coke and multiple <laughs> times and in different scenarios. Oh. Even like putting the mento like a whole thing of Mentos in pop and then shaking up and throwing it at someone. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun if you do it in sub zero weather because then it freezes like instantly. Yes. Okay, yeah, Angel in the back. <laughs> I have not Tomorrow at um, Speaking of Gravity Falls, you should all come to Mabel Pines for Congress in panel room. I have no idea. <laughs> it's at 1 p.m. tomorrow. No, I noon. So apparently I'm going to Gravity Falls tomorrow. Yes. Yes, yes we are going to Gravity Falls tomorrow. Okay, yeah, it was, it was Flower Crown last year. year. It was Mr. Buster. What, what do the other scientists think of your relationship with Cecil? They disapprove. Why do they disapprove? I don't know. I've actually been trying to get information from them on why they disapprove of us. Well, obviously they're lame. Because it yeah. distracts from your science drive. Basically that. <laughs> it distracts me from doing science. He has quite a drive. <laughs> okay, some other things. Okay, next question. Yeah, you have the chart of that. You've been very talkative. I like that. Five. Only <laughs> five? That's only the furry pairs. <laughs> yeah, that's the only. That's only the furry pairs. Yeah, you in the back of the game shirt. It was also been really talkative. Um, this is strictly out of context, but who do you think is gonna win for mayor? I want the face of Soldom. Hire the Daniels. Speaking out of character. Hire the Daniels. Hire the Daniels. Hire the Daniels. Hire the Daniels. Hey, let's take a vote. Who wants Hire the Daniels to win? Who wants? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Who wants the face of the old woman to win? Faceless old woman or high? Okay, and it looks like according to this, the dragon one. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know what though? You know who might be a dark horse candidate? The um, Steve Carlsberg. No, he Steve Carlsberg sucks. Yeah, he sucks. No, um, the geologist who, or the person who lives in the geology department. <laughs> oh yes. Oh. Yes, the rock. The professor who lives in the geology. No, well, no, she's just a homeless woman. Who exactly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. With the, yeah, the what is her rapper. name? Yeah, the angel in the back. What do you do with the dead scientist? What? Is this a joke? I don't know. What do you do? Barium. Oh, you barium. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because barium is an element on the periodic table. Oh my god. I have another joke. Yeah. What kind of weather can you expect when the glow cloud rolls in? What kind of weather can you expect when the glow cloud rolls in? I don't know what. Hail. Hail. Oh. <laughs> Okay, maybe we're just gonna do puns for the rest of the day. Does anyone else have a pun? <laughs> yeah, Angel again. A stick. <laughs> What's red and smells like blue paint? Red paint. <laughs> yeah, we have seven minutes left. Okay. Any other questions or comments or whatever? You and the Tardis head. Okay. I've always wondered this. He's never been in the studio. No, I always listen to it. I usually turn it on when he's on broadcasting. And I usually, when he ever mentions me, I kind of fluster up a bit. And that's why the scientists I work with disagree with me being in a relationship with him. Because it distracts me a little bit. I'm out of character question. What was your reaction to the... Episode where he talked about the first date. Oh my god. Oh, well, I would like to see it. This is like really, really cute. So talk to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in character. That was, that my was question character. was out of character. Wait. This is in character. Is there in character? character? Oh, in character, I kind of, like, my whole face would be red and I dropped everything that I was working on and kind of glared at the radio. <laughs> wondering why would you say that on a broadcasting system in front of everybody? Because I was really happy. Well, you were really happy, but I was really, really happy. <laughs> Not everybody needs to know that. I was I'm in the sorry. dog park. No, it's the <laughs> <short ride. laughs> Yeah, Carcat. Uh, Follow-up question: How many beakers have you dropped due to Cecil oh saying something on the radio? <laughs> Countless number of times to the point I can't even remember anymore. You assume he's always working when he's listening to my show. Okay, yeah, you in the flower crown. Carlos, did you hear Cecil's broadcast when he thought you were dead? Oh my God. Oh. Oh. That was in the one year later episode. Oh, okay. Well, no, that was happening in real time, so he wouldn't have because he would be unconscious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened? What was your reaction when he listened to it? Later? Yeah. I can't remember. No, I can't. Oh. Okay. He can't remember. I, their their personal was. lives got a little um, involved at that point, so uh, involved. They, they were they were a little distracted. From what I heard from various squirrels and hooded figures. 
<laughs> yeah, Nepeta. Or Mulan. Are you Nepeta or Mulan? That's a Mulan. Okay, I've been calling you Nepeta. I'm sorry. Cecil, is there anything you hate more than Steve Girls No. Desert Bluffs. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Desert Bluffs. <laughs> but but Desert Bluffs is a whole, like, a bunch no, of miles away from me. So, but Steve Carlsberg lives in Nightville. So I'm mad at him more. We have to see his untied left shoe all the time. Yeah, oh my god, that bugs the shit out of me. <laughs> Next question, and or comment. Yeah, Angel again. Why is 6 afraid of 7? Because 7, 8, 10. I mean 9! <laughs> because 7, 8, 10. No, because 7 is a registered 6 offender. Because 7 is a registered sex offender. 6 offender. 6 offender. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that was good. <laughs> oh, that's so, uh, what is Brown and Rhymes with Snoop? Dr. Dre. Uh, <laughs> she said, what okay. is Brown and Rhymes with Snoop? Good. Dr. Good. Dre. I don't know. Okay, well, that. okay, then fine. How does a pirate measure their ship? Oh, God, what? With a yardstick. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes. The name of the person that lives in the community science building, building is uh, Simone Rigado. Yes, that Did is you just look that up? Did you just look that up? Yeah, unfortunately. Nice. No. <laughs> it was bugging me that I couldn't read I know, I know. I was, I was really like, okay. Yeah, yeah Dave Sprite. Yeah, Tricks for Dave Sprite. What is, Whatever. What is the pirate's favorite letter of the alphabet? R? No, no the pirate's true love is the C. Yeah. Oh, it's the C. <laughs> well, then, in that case, in that case, what do you call a pirate with two, le two eyes and two legs? A rookie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you right there in the Yarr. middle. Oh gosh, how much does the pirate pay for corn? A buccaneer. Yeah. Mm. Okay, okay, well, this is just a bad puns panel now. No, this yeah, is a bad pirate pun panel now. You were the pirate in the front. I for this. Um, pirate in the front, stand up. Uh, hey, look, we have an actual pirate here. Yeah. Stop <laughs> Uh, this joke is for Carlos. Um, what does 16 sodiums and Batman have in common? What? No, 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 what? The Arkenstone! The Arkenstone! <laughs> okay, yeah, you in the back. Just a minute, Desi. Okay, what do you call a girl who loves her cooking wear? What? Pansexual. <laughs> I'm very offended because I'm pansexual. <laughs> no, I'm actually not. I mean, I am pansexual, but I'm not offended. <laughs> yeah, you Desi. Carlos, do you have 67 protons? Because you're a hoe! Oh. <laughs> He's not. He's my lovely Carlos, and he doesn't engage in those activities except with me. John! Yes, what's your question? What do you call a girl with one arm and one leg? What do you call a girl with one arm and one leg? A villain turn. A villain turn, apparently. No, what's the actual answer? Intern Eileen. Intern Oh, intern Eileen, okay. That's good. Okay, Desi again. Okay, I have two. But where does a girl with one leg work? Where? I have. I have. Okay. Oh, yeah. Actually, I went there last night. Why it was really good. Why did Stacy fall off the swing? Why did Stacy fall off the swing? She had no arms. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, who's there? Not Doug. Who's there? Not Stacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pirate in the front. Uh, I got another joke for um, Carlos. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, what does a teenage boy and DNA Hellcase have in common? What do they have in common? They both want to unzip the jeans. <laughs> That's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, you in the Gamzee shirt in the back. Back on topic, because this is straight hilarious. Thank boring. you for getting this back on topic. Uh, what was your reaction to uh, Carlos and Cecil getting together, like your actual like split second? Me? I screamed like a little girl. Oh my god, <laughs> I fangirled so hard. I loved that. Oh luckily though, yeah, it took them a year to get together, but luckily that was right after. I got into oh. the Nightville fandom, so I could just listen to it. <laughs> that, was that, was really, that was the most recent episode when I cut out. Yeah, that was really yeah. cute. I like how their relationship There's a two-week period where we all started listening to Nightville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I 
think I don't think Carlos, what was your reaction? Part, the, what, my favorite part to the actual episode. Out of character. Oh, out of character. I was like extremely happy and I just like kind of like jumped around with joy. I may have <laughs> screamed in my car because that's where I listened to I know. Uh, <laughs> my reaction uh, was was not exactly that, but mostly because I, I, I personally enjoy analyzing the antics of fandoms in a sociological context. And this just fit into a pattern that I didn't like. I think yeah. one of my favorite parts about the fact that Carlos and Cecil got together was just how casual they were about it, you know? It's I like, did they, like that. they didn't really make like it that. a big deal. You know? It was just like any other relationship. Yeah, but the fandom blows way out of proportion. Yeah. That's like, oh, yes, that's what they make it all the show about when it's really more than that. I believe my reaction was something along the lines of goddamn canon slash. <laughs> but yeah, and the weather in that episode was actually, um, it was performed by, uh, what's his name? No, one of the creators. Like, it was a hand-picked song for that special episode. Yeah, something like that. Joseph Finker, Jack McCrina, one of the two. They sung it. And they also sung the weather in the first episode. Fun fact. It's time. What? Oh, we're out of time. We're out of time. I am unfortunately booked right. solid set, so. Thank you for coming to our panel. I hope it wasn't a disaster.